Thank you. You did awesomely well yesterday. So that's why I'm disturbing you again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, good morning, man. Oh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome. Okay. Uh... Well, thank you, man, for the privilege. It's actually not um, a disturbance. It's a privilege for me. It's my first major conference, and um, I'm so happy to, to be participating in, in this um, conference. So can we have a brief moment of prayer as we um, open this session? Father, we thank you for yesterday's program. We thank you for the success of uh, yesterday. Thank you for all the uh, insights and um, knowledge we've gathered. Lord, as we declare this um, um, conference open, Lord, we can take control in Jesus' name. Every speaker that we are going to be listening to, the business insights, you know, um, insight as we act into all these uh, um, sections, that is, uh, it's not only to just attend to the will to uh, to be diligent and to take everything we are going to be learning into and um, practice them um, in Jesus' name. Father, take control in Jesus' name. We pray. Okay, um, quickly, I'm going to just introduce our, our amiable moderator. Um, it's a privilege also. Uh, my name is uh, Ms. Docas Etim Jimmy. I'm just going to read a citation quickly. Docas Jimmy is a graduate of petroleum engineering from um, Utah State University of Science and Technology. She started off her professional career as um, a personal lecturing assistant, um, graduate assistant to Professor E. Wami. Uh, the graduate project design um, was um, a design of a floating roof crude oil storage tank of 100,000 barrel per day capacity that has um, attracted third fund research grants and was established in um, Taraba State University. She also has um, a distinction in um, MPEG um, in petroleum, that is Master in Technology in Petroleum Engineering from the same university, River State University. She has been a project management um, assistant to Professor E.N. Wami for the establishment of the world-class Peace Center um, University. She's also a drilling fluid specialist with um, over five years um, of experience in assisting in lecturing, drilling fluid technology, and other uh, jobs related to um, drilling fluid um, formation. And also, she's also our current um, young professional co-chair, yeah, and um, the student coordinator for women in um, energy at Career Guidance for Society of Petroleum Engineers, Session 103. Uh, it's my, um, it's a great honor for me to um, welcome Ms. Dockers Eti Jean, um, Jean to handle um, this session. Thank you so much, ma'am, and um, have a nice time. Oh, sorry. Thank you so much, David. Thank you. I sincerely do appreciate that for stepping in. Um, also, we'll go back to our program. After the um, introduction of the moderator is supposed to be a safety brief. So we'll move straight to that. Okay, so where is my slide? Okay. All right, so moving straight to our safety brief. All right, um, we'll be going through the following safety brief. Um, do not take this call while you're driving. If you're joining us while in transit, please pack safely at a corner and um, join. Don't join while driving. And also try to use your headset um, 
if you're in a public place so you can hear us properly. Um, also, ensure you have an emergency phone number beside you in case of any emergency. We don't want any emergency. We're not looking forward to any emergency. But just to be safe, make sure you have an emergency phone number beside you in case of any emergency. And also make sure your fire alarm is working and is loud enough. So in case of any fire hazards or fire incidents. And then also um, when using a headset, please ensure that you can still hear the fire alarm for those of us that will be using headsets wherever we are. Ensure that you still be able to hear the fire alarm. And then also please ensure that you mute. If you're not speaking or you're not called upon to speak, make sure your mic is muted so you not interrupt the section with the background noise from your end. And also keep in mind um, the name of the building or the room where you are at. Um, so in case of any emergency, you'll be able to give someone proper direction and directive to come help or rescue. And then also um, keep in mind um, the nearest fire alarm that is closer to you. Make sure there is a fire extinguisher beside you and make sure you know your <clears throat> emergency exit point and point of safety, muster point where you can um, hold on and wait for safety to come. Also ensure that um, you have a first aid kit beside you uh, so that in case of any emergency or any situation incident that can happen. Um, and also please stay active and participate so that also you can participate and get to enjoy um, your get to enjoy the raffle draw because if you're called upon or your number is called upon and you're not on the call, you're not active and participating, you cannot enjoy the raffle draw. And then also keep um, fluids and food away from your devices um, to avoid any electrical or any hazard um, associated with fluids or food um, substances. And above all, ensure to abide and to follow the COVID-19 protocol, um, wear your nose mask, your face mask, your face shield, or whatever necessary, and also um, ensure to stay away from crowded areas if you can, as much as possible, uh, make sure you have a sanitizer beside you that you can use in a situation of being around a crowded area. And um, just everything that has to do with COVID-19 protocol, COVID is real. And even if you feel, like someone said, even if you feel you have the Holy Spirit living in you, that nothing can attack you and all that, other people are scared or other people seem not to have the Holy Spirit living in them. So take safety precautions, not just for yourself, but for those around you also. So thank you very much. And we sincerely do appreciate. All right, um, we're going to take a, lit a few raffle draw, about three. Simeon, would you be able to take that for us now? Yeah. All right, so let's take three raffle draws and then we'll call on our speaker. Okay, please confirm if you can see my screen. Yes, I can. Okay. Okay, I shall phone. So our first number is 116. Who is number 116? Are you seeing it? Uh, my screen is kind of very small. I don't know why. If you see it first before okay. me, go ahead and call it out. Chiamaka. No Siri, Chiamaka. No Siri, Chiamaka. Uh, Simeon, you know what just conducted? My screen is kind of... Tiny, I don't know why. While I fix that, you just take care of the raffle draw completely, please. Thank you. The first number here is uh, Noziri 
chair marker. Do we have chair marker on the call? Please unmute and speak if you are here. Don't think she's there. Let's go to shuffle. And our locking winner is number nine. Number nine is David Ushendo. David Ushendo. Do we have David on the phone? Yes, David is active. David. David, what did you rob? See, what are you doing and coming to this event? He's a word of service. Wait, he won yesterday. Yes, so. Yes. Uh, the person that won yesterday, can the person still hold that position today? David, sorry. Is he allow him? Like, um, yes, you can like allow him. Okay, okay. Allow him. Allow him. Okay. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so we have our first lucky winner today, David Uchendu. So you take his uh, contact. I have his contact okay. already. David, I'm going to come for secret though. I don't know how they do this thing. No. This one is double portion. Okay, I'll <laughs> And we have 89. 89, 8, and 9. We have Roya Matthias. Roya Matthias. Do we have Roya on the call? Roya, I don't think so. So go ahead to shuffle again. We have 71. 71. Adekemi Idakari. Do we have Adekemi on the call? Anyone like that? No. Shuffle again. We have 45. Four, five. Blessing. Blessing. Came the Benjamin. Blessing. We have blessing. Blessing. I don't think so. Okay, we shuffle again. We have ninety four. Nine four. Akachuku Francis. Do we have Akachuku Francis on the call? Francis, I don't think so. So some of the not winning numbers are not here. Okay. Um, okay, so Simeon, so far we have one raffle draw winner, right? Let me go yes. to the chat box and see who was from my end who was the first person to drop a chat on the chat box? Victor Njoko Abiaziem. So you are another lucky winner, Victor. So that's two. And and you can shuffle for one more. Okay. So, Victor, please drop your phone number and Daniel too. Don't forget. We have 40. 40. So, let's see who is the lucky person here. Williams. Angela Domini. Williams. Do we have Williams on the call? William. William, going, William, don't think so. So I shuffle again. 42, 
We have 42 as the lucky winner. Frida Amwa. Do we have Frida Amwa on the call? Frida. Frida. Don't think so. Uh, okay. Can I shuffle again? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. We have one, two, five. One, two, five. One, two, five. Obina, Amoni. Obina, Amoni. Do we have Obina Amoni here? Obina. I don't think so. No response. So I shuffle for again. One, two, four. One, two, four. One, two, four is purity. Purity. Is purity on the call? Purity. Yes, I'm here. Good morning. Uh, but you don't want to respond. You just like, <laughs> we'll give it to someone else. <laughs> Maybe we'll she give it doesn't like gifts. <laughs> I'm here. My guitar has been fluctuating. I'm here. Okay, good. So congratulations, all our lucky winners. We have three so far, and that is what we're going to take. So David, um, Purity, and um, um, who else did I call? And Victor, please put your number on the chat box for me and also indicate the network so you get your prize or your reward for being our lucky raffle draw winners. All right, so um, thank you so much, Simeon. Thank you for stepping in and for filling in the gap. We sincerely do appreciate. So I'm going to share my screen again and so we can know what is the next activity. All right, um, the next um, activity for the day is the welcome address by the section chairman, which he is not here. So please like a student coordinator. Like I always say, um, most time I am the one you see in the, in the spotlight, but the reality is I have a whole lot of team and a whole lot of orgas at the top behind the scene that make sure this program is a reality. If they don't give their approval, we will not be here. And so I sincerely do appreciate their effort. I mean, I can call, these are married men, but yet they let me, text them even as late as 10 o'clock just to find out or to make arrangements for this program. So I sincerely do appreciate their sacrifices, their love, their volunteerism for SPE. And one of us or one of the person that is doing that for us is none other than Mr. Kennedy Israel. I admire him a lot because working with students recently, I have, I mean, I lecture students. Yes, I'm, I lecture and I come across to them, but you know, lecturer and student relationship is far easier. You're giving order, people are just obeying. But in this situation, you people are volunteering. So nobody is, entitled to obey your order. So it takes a lot of patience, a lot of perseverance. And I'm like, is this what Mr. Kennedy goes through for? He, he was this, he had the same position last year and he's still holding it now. How does he survive? How does he do it? So please, Mr. Kennedy, sir, go ahead and declare the event officially open for us so we can kick start. Thank you very much. Over to you, Mr. Kennedy, sir. Okay, um, good morning, everybody. Uh, Dokas, thank you for having me here. And um, thank you for wanting to coordinate um, the WDP, uh, this, which is a women development program as part of the Women in Energy uh, program, which we are having um, for all the schools in section 103. 
Uh, I'm standing uh, on existing protocols and also standing on behalf of our section chairman who is unavoidably absent, okay? And uh, like I said earlier, section 103 has um, 12 student chapters and um, for the initiative of the WIN uh, Women in Port Harcourt uh, for section 103 um, SPE, having um, the program to go two schools, uh, two schools per, per session. I want to really appreciate that uh, initiative and also thank the student um, chapter president, thank the student chapter president for uh, being available and also volunteering. Uh, sorry, yesterday I had lots of engagements and today to have some engagements as well. So I might um, leave anytime soon. As we are aware, um, one of our student chapter are in the quarterfinals of uh, the Petro Bowl. So by by 12.30, I should be hooking up to the Petro Bowl. It's, an, it's a competition for SPE. I know you will be there. So I have to leave by 12.30 to join them for that competition. Hopefully, I'll be able to come back with the, with the prize um, today. So please, for the program, I, sorry, I beg my pardon. I did not say hi to Mrs. Abigail Eniboka and Catherine Wachuku. Ms. Abigail, please thank you for honoring our invitation. It was a lot of feedbacks we had during um, the students' program we held in December. And I have to like, contact you again for this one. And I'm, I'm very happy uh, you are here again to talk to the students, which I know a lot of them will learn from you. And Catherine, Catherine has been a very good friend over the years. Um, in SPE, and I know with her wide range of experience, she has a lot to tell the students as well in this aspect. So for students of NAU, that is Nanda Ziko University and um, Nanja Delta University, and other students, which I can see from other chapters in, in, in the attendance, please um, feel free to have fun, enjoy, learn, and relearn again. There is um, no knowledge that is um, waste in whenever you're learning and also feel free to ask questions uh, when um, the event is is over so thank you for having me here and um, docas well i try to marry the students uh it's it's our call to volunteer so we just have to do what we need to do to make sure the section moves forward thank you once again and have a nice day ahead thank you so much Sir, thank you. We sincerely do appreciate it. and thank you for joining us and for being here. Okay, um, at this time, we'll move on to the next program of the day, which is introduction of our first speaker by the moderator. But like I said, my screen is having malaria today. So I am going to let um, Pearl Inyang, she is the vice president, I think, of Niger Delta University to please step in, fill in the gap for me and take the honors of introducing our second speaker. Pearl Inyang, are you there? Pearl. Pearl Inyang. Okay. I'll just zoom it out. Maybe my, my system is telling me I need glasses or something, I'm not sure. <laughs> so anyway, so um, speaking to us today for the first time, actually for the first time of Women Development Program, I've actually listened to her speak before, that was at the student conference where she gave us insight on how to establish a business and how to use your online contact resourcefully and make um, good money out of it. Um, she is a wonderful woman, um, very industrious and a great woman. So at this time, I'm just gonna read a citation and then she can go ahead and take the podium. Um, Abigail Enibokam 
a business coach and the CEO of She Invests Consulting, is an online business coach and the founder of She Invests Consulting, a firm dedicated to empowering the female entrepreneur through pro proper business structuring and financial literacy, a chartered accountant with over nine years a chartered accountant with over nine years of cognate experience in corporate finance. She has an MBA from River State University of Science and Technology. You see at River State, at RSU, we bring out the best. Yeah, I know other people want to stone me. <laughs> so from River State University of Science and Technology, as well as masters in international business from Paul Leonard de Vinci um, University University of Paris. I'm not a French person, so please pardon me. She is very passionate about helping women live their best lives. So she coaches women who desire to earn from their passion, build profitable online business, um, online businesses. They are inspired and enabled to become confident online CEOs as well as become the best version of themselves. She helps them discover their genius zone earners their skills, knowledge, expertise, and experience into online business so that they can create wealth and impact doing an impact doing doing what they love best or what they love. So at this time, um, let's please um, give our audience and our attention to Madam Abigail Enibokam as she speaks to us on smashing those glass ceilings, empowering yourself from the perspective of an entrepreneur and a businesswoman. Thank you very much, Madam Abigail. And you have 30 minutes to speak to us. Please go ahead, ma'am. You have to unmute yourself, ma'am. We can't hear you. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for the awesome privilege. Um, I hope I have the Permission to share my screen? Okay. Yes, you are. Yes. All right. Just a minute. Can you all see my screen? Yes, we can. All right. Thank you so much once again, Dockers. Um, thank you for the entire team behind this awesome and amazing program. Um, in the next 30 minutes, God willing, I'll be sharing some some things with you that can help you, you know, um, shatter those um, glass ceilings, like we call them, right? So um, today I'll be focusing majorly on empowering yourself as a woman in business, all right? Okay, so um, my agenda today is first of all to do like an introduction, and then I'm going to talk about your mindset and business. And I'm also going to be talking about the five major mindset blocks that you must shatter to win as a woman in business. And then finally, um, how to overcome them, right? And um, of course, we'll have time for Q&A soon. All right. Um, I'd love to start my introduction by sharing my story. Um, I've heard, I'm sure most of you have heard also that the glory of um, kings are in their story, right? Okay. So, um when I saw the topic, you know, I was kind, I, I fell in love with it. Why? Because it speaks to me personally, right? And so um, by the time I share my story, you'll be able to understand. I'm one woman who had to also deal with glass ceilings, right? And um, first of all, um, I found out at the age of six that, you know, I was being called like, um, a bastard, right? And I didn't know what the word bastard meant, right? And so in a confused state, just like an ordinary child, all we need to do at that age is play and all that. But I was like, what's the meaning of this, you know? And um, as tender as I was, I started searching for a dictionary to find out what the meaning of that name is, what the meaning of the word is, right? And um, to my wildest <laughs> surprise, you know, I found I was someone who didn't have a father. Right. I'm um, proud to this time. I also noticed that, um, you know, I, I was being shouted on every now and then, like, get quiet, shut up. Why are you talking when other people are talking and all those kind of things, right? And um, it didn't make sense. So that was a big blow for me. But that began my journey into um, withdrawing into my shell, 
you know, and not just um, living the life that I wanted to live. So um, basically I found out, yeah, this lady was, you know, <laughs> <laughs> there are circumstances around my bed, and um, because of that, you know, grew up in a polygamous family, and um, it was a whole lot of issues. If you, if anyone here watched the Fudu House, Fuji House of Commotion, that was my story. So imagine being brought into that kind of setting. So it was really crazy, right? And so the words that were spoken to me, the environment I grew in, the experiences that I had, you know, and um, got to me, right? And this lady shut down. Like I shot in and I shut down, right? Along the line, I began to feel um, very fearful. I felt I was so ugly. I also felt that I was what nothing. I felt that I was a, what the cause of so many problems around me. And because I faced rejection quite early, it affected my self-esteem. In fact, I moved from um, from, from low self-esteem to no self-esteem at all. Um, identity crisis was part of my story. Inferiority complex was my thing, right? And I found it very difficult to give myself permission to be, all right, because of what um, had happened to me and the experiences that I had. So when you talk about glad sinning, I've been there. I can really, really relate. And I hope that um, today, by the time we're done, someone who is on the same table that I was so many years ago will be able to come out, give themselves permission to be and embrace all that God has for them, okay? So this is the girl who was like the rejected stone, now the chief cornerstone, all right? And uh, why? Because I got to the point where I had to realize that something was wrong with me. I was fighting battles in my mind, all right? There were words that were spoken over me. I've held on to them. I believed in them. And so um, I had issues, okay? So in our journey today, I'm going to be sharing some steps, certain things. I'll be also bringing in my story just to elaborate and um, portray certain things and um, most of the points that I'll be sharing, okay? And um, right now, I'm a full-time stay-at-home mom. I run my business from the comfort of my home with my phone, my laptop, and an internet access. I'm good to go, right? I have three amazing boys. I am happily married and I am not just impacting lives, I'm also um, generating income doing what I love online. So um, do we have glad ceilings? Do we really, really have glad ceilings as women? Let's proceed, you know, even as I break down this very topic. All right, so we begin. If you're ready, um, I'd like to start by saying that there is no glass ceiling anywhere. <laughs> uh, yes, there's no glass ceiling anywhere. The only one that exists is the one we have built in our mind, okay? That's where the glass ceiling is. And if you doubt it, right, I want you to tell me, or if you're struggling with this statement I've made, tell me in the chat section where you saw the glass ceiling, basically. Tell me. <laughs> all right. So there's no glass ceiling anywhere. It's all about our mind. And so for you to win in business as a woman, we need to talk about your mindset and business. I had shared earlier on that today I run my business from the comfort of my home. And I, I know that one of the things that lots of ladies struggle with, especially in the online, is especially going online, right? And leveraging that platform for impact and wealth creation, right? So um, in my course of coaching people, and even me as a person, I had also, um, I had to deal with all this too, initially when I started. Mine has been a journey, right? But um, I think my change started coming from the point where I began to realize that I needed help, right? Because I was self-sabotaging, right? Um, doors could open for me. I'll practically not walk through them. I won't take, um, I will see, I won't seize opportunities because um, the glass ceiling was in my mind, okay? So um, what are the major, 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 you know, mindset issues, you know, that women struggle with when it comes to, um, business, right? Whether it's offline or online, let's talk about them a little bit, right? And um, so I would like to say that we all have mindset blocks. At one point in time or the other, we do have mindset blocks. Now, if your story is like my own story, your mindset block is huge, <laughs> right? So uh, we need to treat it as an emergency and get to work, right? Uh, some people don't have that kind of um, extreme situations like mine, right? But I must assure you that every woman 
have mindset blocks. You know, we deal with certain issues in the mind. Why? Our culture doesn't favor the woman, the experience the woman have in this, our notable society, and too good also, right? Uh -huh. The way we were raised, the family we're born into, all right, the experiences of life, right, could leave us so wounded, you know, and leave us with baggages that sometimes we're not even conscious of the fact that these things are resident inside of us, right? So yeah, we all have mindset blocks. And um, I must say also at this point that for every single woman who has succeeded to build an online business or even an offline business, they had to retrain their brain to overcome destructive mindset blocks, okay? And um, it, I cannot overemphasize the fact that having a solid mindset is absolutely key to your success in business, be it an online one or an offline business, okay? However, I am particularly focused on online business because it's the way to go, right? So um, the beliefs you have is key, right? Right? We all need to delete any belief system that doesn't serve our purposes. So as your sister right now, listening to me, I'm going to take you through some mind work. You know, I'm probably going to be touching um, mem or awakening memories you probably don't want to remember or bring back, right? Um, the whole idea is to expose the lies that we've held on to. Basically, those are, that's where the glass ceiling is is in our mind, right? So we're gonna expose where they are, right? You're gonna become aware of them. Some of us are not even aware that we do have this um, mindset blocks or um, glass ceilings in our mind that is restricting us. So we need to come into the place of awareness and say, oh, this is where, this is what has caused me to self-sabotage all this um, time, right? So we move. Um, mindset that seals right the five major mindset blocks that every woman needs to you know shatter if they want to win online um i'm going to point them out here right so that we can really understand what i'm talking about um even while i started or when i thought when the idea of what is now my thriving coaching business online um came to me these are the things i battled with right and then working with women, having worked with lots of women, right? From the career woman to the stay-at-home mom to the business woman, you know, and every one of them, I found out how these are the five major mindset blocks that they deal with. Feelings of unworthiness. Oh my God, this will make you not to venture. Why? Because you feel unworthy, unworthy. You don't want to go out there because you don't feel worthy. I had to deal with this too when I started my own, or when I was even contemplating with the idea of going online to do um, business, right? The next mindset that you must shatter and that most women deal with is self-doubt. They doubt everything about them. They doubt their idea. And so you see people, women aborting dreams, aborting solid ideas that, you know, um, before they come into full manifestation, they kill. They kill ideas and they kill dreams because they still doubt themselves a lot, right? Another mindset issue that women mostly struggle with, you know, is fear of visibility. I don't want to be seen. I felt, you know, in my experience, you know, I said I shot in, I withdrew, right? So I've always felt I was an introvert. No, I'm not an introvert. Situation and circumstances you know, made me to draw in, but that was not the original intention. That was not the template. That's not my blueprint, right? So along the line, I had to do um, a mindset work. I began to tell myself, I'm not an introvert, right? Yeah, what I went through in life had made me to respond to life this way, but I had to give myself the permission to start discovering who I am and allowing the real Abigail to show up. So what I tell people right now is that I'm not an introvert, I'm, I'm an intro introverted extrovert, right? So what I do is sometimes I'm all out there, sometimes I love my me moments, right? Just me all by myself. So um, one of the things I struggle with is fear of visibility. I don't want to put myself out there. I want to be the lady who does the world behind the scene, right? I wasn't considered a social media person. What I had before I started my business on um, Instagram was just a Facebook page. Guess what we do, right? You're in the office, you take a picture, you put it out there. Um, you have birthday parties for your children, you put it out there, right? You go to church, you put it out there. 
that was just all I knew. I never knew anything about social media monetization, right? So putting myself out there, I never knew what Instagram was all about. I didn't have an Instagram account, right? So putting myself out there was quite a struggle because I didn't want it. And lots of women deal with it. I know as I'm speaking, some of you are already nodding like, oh, this is my thing, right? And then, of course, the fear of failure. What if I fail? <laughs> what if I go out there and I'm a total, uh, you know, failure? What's going to happen to me and all that, you know? So these were the thoughts. These were the battles in my mind. And this is what a lot of women struggle with. And these are the results, as in this is what causes the ceiling. Because when you say you have a glass ceiling, it's just that it's just saying you can't exceed a particular place, right? A point, right? You can't achieve certain things, right? Because something is limiting you, right? So yeah, by the time you're, you're, you're dealing with a worthiness, you think you're not good enough, um, you don't know enough, you don't consider yourself an expert, you're struggling with self-doubts, every idea that comes to you, you abort them before they see the light of the day, you're afraid of um, visibility, you don't want to be seen out there, you'd rather play local than go global. You know, and then of course we don't want to try because in our mind we have already failed, right? Before we try, so um, I'd rather not try than try and fail. So these are things that keeps us back, right? And at the end of the day, when you're dealing with all those things, you end up with a broken focus. When you lack focus as a woman, you lack clarity and when you lack clarity you can engage in the purpose well all right so these are the mindsets that seals a woman right these are the mindsets that um, um five major mindset blocks that um if a woman has them stays with them right you can do well in business okay so when you think about the online space or you think about i really want to focus on the online space right because um what i COVID taught us a lot of things, right? And um, if you have a brick and mortar business, you want you want to start considering leveraging the online space. We're in a digital economy right now, and knowledge is the new gold. So you want to start thinking about leveraging the online space and for impact as well as income. So yeah, I'll, I'll focus more on just online business. So if you have been struggling in terms of um, putting yourself out there, starting a business online and all that, I'm sure you're a woman, I'm sure you're dealing with one of, the, one, of, one of them or all of them that I've already talked about. And another thing I want to talk about is what we call the imposter syndrome. I'm sure some of you have heard it. If not heard it, go research it. It's scientific. It's been proven. Every woman deals with the imposter syndrome, right? Feelings of unworthiness, inability to celebrate, even your little wins, even when people commend you, all right, and give you um, feedback or job well done, you find it difficult to celebrate and you think you don't deserve it, right? So um, those negative narratives, um, they stop us in our track and, um, you know, limit how far we can go as women. So if you want to win in business, I want you to begin to look at this very well. Ask yourself, which one of these is playing out in your life? Is it all of them or just a number of them? Um, write them down. I need you to get a pen, a, a journal, a pen. Write down your mindset blocks right now because I'm going to come back to tell you what to do with it, right? Every negative mindset, every negative narrative you have told yourself or someone has told you, please kindly pen it down. We're going to visit it again, all right? So these are what basically you need to be aware of and you need to to know that I need to shatter this if I want to break the invisible um, glass ceiling um, that I have put over myself. All right, so we're going to be talking about smashing the glass ceilings now. What do we need to do to smash them, all right? Um, first of all, I'd like to say that mindset is everything. I hope I'll just keep a slide. All righty. Okay, so mindset is everything, right? Your new mindset will give you new results, okay? If you've been struggling in terms of business, most 99% of the time is all about your mind. What have you held to be true? What have you believed to be true? What are those things that have stopped you? I know this so well because I work with women, I coach women, they, I literally take women with no idea some idea of struggling businesses to the place where they are really impacting lives and making income online, right? Most times it's a mindset thing. Mindset, oh, people are not buying. Ask them, why do you think people are not buying, right? By the time we break it down, it's mindset, right? So what you need to do to smash 
Next thing is capture your thoughts. Capture your thoughts. So you need to capture your thoughts to capture your future. So we go back again to that slide where I said you should write down all your negative narratives, right? I hope you did it. Now, for feelings of unworthiness, what are you going to do? You know, you wrote it on probably on the left side of your book. You're going to write directly opposite, maybe on the right side now. Feelings of unworthiness, what are you going to do? I am worthy. I am good enough. I can do this. My world awaits my awesomeness right so you're going to talk back because i said it's in the mind right everything is playing in your mind and guess what hmm. the truth is that we hand over you know authority to the mind to the negative voices that speak to us and we never counter them so one of the ways i was able to overcome my was first of all being aware knowing that uh -uh, it ought not to be like this yeah i may have had a very rough experience right but that's not my truth. So I began, to, I stood up and began to own my truth. So when these voices begin to speak to me, right? Like, you're not worthy. I am worthy. All right. Who is going to buy from me? Everybody will buy from me. Who, is, who are the everybody? As in people who need my solution, right? So I silence the negativity with my truth. All right. Like I said, you are introvert. I'm not introverted. Circumstances made me introverted. I'm giving myself permission to be me. So I'm allowing my, I'm rediscovering myself and allowing myself to be, right? So I'm not introverted. I could be calm sometimes, but I know that I'm not introverted, right? So become aware and begin to speak your truth. Self-doubt. Why would you doubt yourself, okay? Believe strongly in that which you have, the ability that you have, knowing that all that you have came from God, okay? So um, allow ideas to try, all right? Fear of visibility. Oh, do it afraid anyway. Go out there. Make a difference. Know that, you know, people are waiting for you to come out. So begin to write your truths opposite each and every one of them that you have written okay fear of failure oh i give myself permission to fail why because when i fail i learn what not to do next time in order for me to succeed right i'd rather try than not trying right so begin to speak your truths lack of focus will be handled once you get your worthiness in place once you begin to believe in yourself and the truth is that most businesses online are struggling because of this self-doubt it's so it's it's like a perfume it goes with you the fragrance right it goes with you wherever you go some people can't sell because they're not confident and when you're not confident it shows people see it so if you cannot confidently you know market your offers bring your ideas to the table why should i believe in you enough to want to part with my money for what you have to offer so you see that a lot of business, a lot of people are struggling, a lot of women are struggling just because of lack of confidence, okay? So you want to fix that. I am a confident woman, right? I bring solution to the table, all right? Everyone who is in, who has this problem area needs me, you see? So this is boosting you. Now you're speaking your truth. Once you're able to sort this out, right? Your focus will be in place. When your focus is in place, you begin to engage with clarity. You begin to engage with clarity. You will shamelessly promote your business. Okay? So, have you done what I asked you to do? Have you written your truths? Please write them. Write them. It's so important. If you're done, please strike off the negative narratives. Begin to strike them off one after the other. They are, you're done with negativity. You're done with the glass ceilings that you placed in your own mind, right? This is now your new truth. Please embrace your new you. <laughs> Give yourself permission to be you and to be great without apologies, okay? So this is your new truth. Whenever these voices rise, give them your truth. With time, you see that you silence the voice of negativity and you're empowered to live the kind of life that God has called you to live. This is how, and I do um, overcome. I, I, there's certain things I don't even bother, right? I know when they start. So, you know, I'm, it's all about practice. So with time, you begin to know when what triggers what, right? So when they come up, you silence it immediately and you move, right? All right. So I headed up into my business. I did it afraid. I came online, opened um, my Instagram page. I didn't know what was going there. I don't know how to post. I learned everything all by myself from scratch, right? So sometimes I post, it doesn't look nice. It's okay. I just started, right? So give yourself some 
some space, right? And um, allow yourself to grow, to learn and all that, right? So yeah, you start with what I've said, right? Your truths come to your negativities. When these voices start coming, give them back your truth. With time, the voice of your negativity goes down, right? And then you're empowered. You begin to live as your empowered self, okay? The next thing I said is capture your thoughts, capture your future. That's the exercise we just did, right? So make sure you don't allow your thoughts to run wild. No, 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 no. You are in charge. You know, someone said um, you don't have, um, you can't do anything when the bed flies over your head, right? But there becomes a problem when the bird starts building a nest on your head and you're not doing anything. So your thoughts are like that. They can fly. When they fly, when they come, no problem. Stop them, right? When we now leave them to start building nests and start paralyzing us in fear and holding us back, there's a problem. He's building the nest in your head. Don't, uh, don't get to that stage, okay? All righty. So you capture your thoughts and you capture your future. The next thing you want to start if you want to win in business, haven't done what I've explained earlier on, you want to start already. You want to start already, okay? Come on, if you don't start, how do you know this idea is valid? If I didn't start my business, how would I know that my idea is valid, okay? Okay, let me give you the gist, right? So I transitioned from a paid job, a nine-to-five job, to become a full-time stay-at-home mom, right? Because I relocated out of the country, right? And uh, I was in a place where English was not the official language, I couldn't get a job. I had a four months old baby and I wasn't used to sitting down and doing nothing. It wasn't a very comfortable position for me. So I kept asking the Lord, what? As in, I can't sit like nothing, you know? And I heard it loud and clear go online, you know, and impact lives, you know? So online for me was strange. I couldn't go there, right? It was just a thought, it was just an idea. The same way you get a thought, the same way you get impression, the way some of us call it leading and all that, you know? You need to follow your hearts because it is when you start already, right? I struggled a little bit. I started with WhatsApp first. I took the easy way out, you know. But later, I knew that it was Instagram that I was instructed to go on, right? And I did anyways. I did. I consider myself a student always. I was zero tech savvy, you know, but willing to learn, got coaching, you know, paid for different programs and all that. And small, little by little, one baby step every day, I'm where I am today. So I can probably tell you, you know, I'm generating even more than what I was being paid as a salary earner, just from the comfort of my home. So if I didn't start, I wouldn't have gotten where I got, um, I am right now and where I'm going to, right? So start already, okay? So get your mindset checked, like know your negative narratives, write them down, right? Transfer them from your head to paper. Write your truths, cancel your negative narrative, right? Then you begin to capture your thoughts. Then you start, start with your why, all right? Most of us struggle with this mindset blocks because we don't know who we are. Identity is key to your progress in life. Your why, your purpose, your mission, your vision is very important, all right? So who are you? Why are you doing what you're doing? Why do you want to start a business online or offline, right? You need to know your why. When you start with your why, it gives you a solid foundation, okay? So um, I started my business teaching savings and investments, and then I moved the women to not just um, um, investment and savings anymore. I moved them to how to make money because I found out that you can't save nor invest if you're not making money. I, mean, I, really, I didn't want the ladies to rely on their husbands, you know, so we needed to know how to make money. And so with my MSc in international business, my experience in the corporate world, I was able to move them to start business. Businesses, not like we know it, right? Basically, doing business or making money, doing the things ordinarily would have done for free. So we're so gifted as women. Some of us are seated, seated as in we're sitting on gold mine. Our talents, you know, our hobbies, our interests, experience, expertise, you know, these things are in us and we just sit on them. We're even doing them for free. Family and friends pick our brains for free. Right. So I began to teach them how to monetize the giftings, the talents that were already in them. You know, so we, we were building our own alabaster boxes, you know, and we're tapping into the oils that we already had in our house. If you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> All right. So know your why, know your purpose, know why you want to start this. And one of the things I tell my clients is um, I don't start business because I want to make money. No, I start a business because I want to solve a problem. 
and bringing solution to the table. It's all about impact. There's no way you bring solution to the table. You impact lives that money won't come after you. Okay? So that is it. So you must have a strong why before you start, right? And then you, from there, you gain clarity. You move on to gain clarity. Clarity is so important because if you're not clear on why you're doing what you're doing, you get carried away. And I must um, remind you, <laughs> the online space is busy. There's so many distractions out there. So if you're not, if you're not, you don't have a strong why, you will do everything every other person is doing. If you don't have a strong why, you don't have clarity, you would do just, you'll be carried away, right? And then you say social media distracts, right? You know, so get a why, gain clarity, then you keep going to build your business. Someone will be saying, so how do I build my business? There are five major pillars that you must consider if you want to successfully build a business online. Um, first of all, know your purpose. That is your why, right? A strong why will keep you. Now, this is why making money shouldn't be your goal or your, your why, your only reason. Why? Because business goes what I call, call uh, goes through what I call the life cycle of business. And in this um, life cycle of business, just like human life cycle too, sometimes you go through winter, summer, autumn, you know, and, and um, you don't stop at winter living because it's winter no you keep living because the season is going to change right the same thing with business sometimes your business could go through winter season where the money is not coming like you want it right so if making money is your big goal and your big why you're going to jump out of business you see why people get frustrated it's not working and the throw in the towel was just about making money but if you have impacts driving you and uh, you're actually um, your business is actually positioned to help people uh, go on a transformational journey with you taking them from where they are struggling to the place where they get clarity to the place where they get um, broken down steps that can help them, you know, leave that place of confusion, the place of clarity, you know, then you have, you have um, something that cannot just, you cannot just throw in the power just because you didn't make money this month. So your why should be stronger. Making money is part of it, but it should be stronger than just making money. Impacts, all right? So purpose, the next thing you need to do is to start building an audience very important on the online space it's called social media right we want you to socialize so um here yeah, being visible is key now it doesn't mean you bring your whole life onto social media no you determine the content that you're going to put there you see it ties it goes back to why are you doing what you're doing if you follow me on instagram at abigail and you you will see my stuff there i don't bring my family i don't bring my private life I don't even share my numbers because that's not what I am called to do. I don't want people to work with me because of how much money I am making. I wanted to work with me because they are really keen on impact and income, right? So the next thing you're going to think about is how do I build organically an audience, all right, that loves me, that likes me, that trusts me enough that they want to buy from me, okay? From there, you move to the next step. How do I make money online, revenue, all right? You must answer this question. So your purpose, your audience, revenue, right? You can't make money if you don't have products. Now, I'm not just talking about physical products. I said knowledge is the new gold, right? Um, you won't be, um, as in you won't believe how much people are making just selling their knowledge as digital products, okay? So if you are the type that love physical products, go for it, okay? Make sure the product you chose to sell is meeting people's needs. Don't open or don't start a business just because every other person is doing it. It seems to be like what is involved right now, okay? Then, um, haven't decided, okay, let me bring in this, all right? Because I'm all about monetizing your passion, right? Or your talents or your gifts or your skills, right? Um, nobody pays for talents. Nobody pays for passion. We can't see passion. We can't see your talents. <laughs> Like, like we can't see passion it's passion talent skills knowledge package as products that people pay for so for instance looking at the knowledge and um, business now you want to talk about ebooks master classes online courses right one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching sessions that's if you're into the service space or knowledge-based business right but if you're into physical products or you want to think about oh what are people lacking 
all right in my environment and what do I, what solution do I want to bring in? For instance, uh, maybe water scarcity in your area and then you will go into the business of supplying water and all that. So that you identify the need and you brought a solution, right? Yeah. So um, people pay for packages, products, offers, right? So you must package your knowledge, your passion, all that into products so that people can pay for, okay? That's how they exchange money. So you must think, what are my offerings? What am I bringing to the table, right? In order for me to generate revenue, okay? Once you're able to do that, you must think about systems. Now, I don't believe, okay, let me come in here. I'm a mom with three awesome boys. Um, they're gonna be turning 10, eight and five this year. It, the hands, as in, I wear different hats, okay? And um, most of people ask me, how do you manage? How do you manage, you know? I don't believe that you must sleep on social media to make money. What that means is you must put your system in place, your sales system. This is what sets your sale on automation, right? Um, you sleep and you wake up to a lot. So you must think sales system, all right? And then finally, once the sales are coming in, you want growth, expansion, right? So how can you grow your business? Now, uh, I love to say you can grow your business if you are not growing as an individual. So you must take courses. You must be coached by credible coaches, okay? People that can give you the support, accountability, hold your hands and show you, you know, um, steps to take in order to be get that exponential growth that you're looking for in your business, all right? So basically, this is what we need to do in order for us to win as women in businesses, right? Remember, there's no glass ceiling anywhere apart from the one that we have put in our mind. And um, sometimes we tell, it's not my fault, like me, you know? It's what they did to me, it's what happened to me and everything. But it comes, you know, it, 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 there comes a time where you need to take full responsibility. I could be crying and feeling bad that I was caused as a child. They stole my childhood. Childhood was not um, 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 easy for me. This is it. I'm be, you know, whining and crying about my pain. You know, life is going, right? So um, enough of all the pity party. Dust yourself. Begin to take a journal. Begin to write. See, this thing affected me so much that when an opportunity shows up before me, the first thing that starts playing out is the glass ceilings, you know, those mindset issues. And I give myself a hundred and one reasons why I can't, I fit it. it <laughs> I couldn't, you know, and everything. I fit it is not a word, I just used it, right? So uh, why I am not qualified for that or why I can't do that, you know? So we self-sabotage enough of all that. There's no glass ceiling anywhere. Whether you're a career woman, whether you're looking into going into business, whether you're also looking into going into the into spiritual work or at the call, like pastoring and all that, whatever dream, ideas, you know, whatever thing you have, have dreamt of or proposed or want to achieve, nobody is stopping you but you. I'm telling you, especially when you have the God factor in you, Nobody is stopping you but you. First of all, you have to align with God. Yeah. You know, Christ in us makes all the difference. So you need to go back to, you know, who made you, right? Have a wonderful relationship with him. If you don't, you will keep struggling. From there, give yourself permission to be, right? And be great. Okay. That is how you shatter the glass ceilings. Okay. Thank you very much. You can connect with me on social media, on Instagram. I do, I'm basically on Instagram, a whole lot on Instagram. You can connect with me on Instagram, Facebook. You can send me an email. If you have any question, I am open to taking your questions right now, okay? And um, I hope you learned one or two things. I'm super glad you gave me the opportunity to speak to you. If you need extra help, send me a DM, send me an email. You want me to work with you one-on-one, -on -one, send me an email to get it rolling, all right? So, Dockers, I'm done. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, ma'am. That was a wonderful section and a great time. We sincerely do appreciate your time and your lecture. Please, if you have any questions, you can either drop them on the chat box or um, signify by using the raising hand emoji. And you can go ahead and ask her directly um, your question. Okay, I see one question from David Echendu. It says, I am also a social entrepreneur. I am asking if my enterprise can also focus on money or just impact. 
um, the two of them come up with separate head. There is no way you go for impact that income doesn't follow you. I said something. I said impact is all about bringing solution. All right. Once you bring solution to the table, you're bringing in. You're bringing income. Nobody solves problem that is ignored. Okay. If you keep solving problem, money comes to you. All right. Joseph had to solve the problem in Egypt. All right. And guess what? They kept coming. They kept coming. Right. Daniel had to solve a problem too. They kept coming. They kept coming, right? Uh, Facebook, Instagram, solve, Amazon, solving problem, right? The money is entry. They are becoming the richest people in the world and everything. Uh, what's his name now? The solar guy, um, Elon Musk, is solving problem. He's become the richest person in the world. So all I'll say, you can't separate it. I'm just saying, don't make money. You know, it's like chasing money. At what point will you get it, right? So don't make... I want to um, make money, your only goal, right? Solution driven. Impact income goes hand in hand. It can't be separated. Thank you so much. Um, so you got it, David. So um, make impact and definitely you make money. I, I tell people, you, you can't solve problems and be broke. Exactly. It's not even, even when you want to do it out of free will, there's definitely someone that's going to say, wow, for this well done. Or there's going to be somebody that says, wow, because you did this so well, um, I want to offer you this job. I want to make you this offer or so. So yeah. um, the two goes together. And then there's another question from Sandra. Sandra says, Ma, what do you think about living up to people's expectations? Okay, um, from my experience and working with women, I have realized that when you're involved in people pleasing, you have a self-esteem issue. So you're seeking for validation and approval because of you feel when you do this, they will appreciate you, they will validate you, they will approve you, right? So it's a low self-esteem issue. You need to fix it, right? Um, when I say impact, I'm not saying that you should forget about who you are, forget your dreams, and go all out to meet and give, 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 right? Without considering yourself, right? So you need to strike a balance, but it's a foundation, the foundational issue most times is low self-esteem. Um, um, and so you need to fix that, right? So you need to validate yourself first. And honestly, you know, the Nigerian woman, a lot of us were not validated. The first man or man in our lives that's supposed to validate us is our father. And we can attest to the fact that most homes have absentee fathers. Uh, those who are even present are really absent too. So you have a lot of damaged ladies out there. Take up the responsibility. Begin to validate yourself first, right? So people pleasing is not a good thing to do, right? Because um, it's not the good thing to do, basically. So strike a balance. If I didn't answer you well, send me a DM. I could have a session with you, all right? Okay, uh, we have it there. Uh, let's see. I don't think I see any more questions. It's just uh, people appreciating your time and giving positive feedbacks for the lecture. Um, thank you so much, Madam Abigail. That was a wonderful section. That was a wonderful knowledge and impact. Uh, we sincerely do appreciate your knowledge, your expertise, and your time. And like she said, she's um, on social media. So please reach out to her, connect with her for further clarity or counseling and help. Um, remember, one of the She Invest um, consultants said their goal or their vision is turning women into chasing their passion and doing what they enjoy doing best while making money from it. So uh, please reach out to her. I'm sure even our males too, um, we we'll also do also have the permission to reach out to her and she'll be glad to put you through and help you through whatever you need. Thank you so much, Madam Abigail. We sincerely do appreciate your time. So at this time, um, I'm going to um, display our program here. Um, if we have any more questions, I'll be taking them. As the, as the time permits. Um, but for now, let's move to our pro, uh, program for today. So the next thing on our program is showcasing your business here. So um, one of the things we plan to do today, or we had um, 
planned on doing today is to give um, young ladies, young men that are part of this um, section. If you have a business you're into, an online um, business or even physical uh, business, anything business, um, you have the opportunity to showcase it. You have one minute. Tell us what you do. Tell us where we can find you, your name, and drop your contact on the chat box. So if we have anybody, we'll start. Just indicate by raising your hand, and I will call upon you. OK, I see Gloria's hand up. All right, Gloria, go ahead. Unmute yourself. and. Showcase your business. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Miss. Miss this session it was really very um, inspiring and educating. Um, I'm a I'm a startup entrepreneur. I run and where we um, we pre-order and we order. We pre-order things mostly from China, Turkey. We pre-order bags, um, designer-inspired bags, watches, and slippers. We also we still have bags and all these items available for people who are not so safe with a pre-order. So if you want to find out more about us, follow us on IG at Cheesy Store. You can drop the message. Our WhatsApp link is on the bio. Thank you. Thank you, Gloria. So there we have Gloria uh, Madubuchi. She has told you they do pre-ordering. So if you want to pre-order anything or you want to um, place an order on a particular product, please reach out to Gloria Madubuchi. She's also on Instagram. She is um, where connected on Instagram. So just in case you can't get hold of her here because of time, you can contact me and I can link you out to Gloria so you can make your pre-orders and patronize her. She's actually a student of Uniport. So it, it's quite beautiful when you see young ladies in school that are ready or willing to um, do something with their time, go into business and investment. So please let's patronize um, Gloria, even if, it's just a handbag or a wristwatch. I, I cannot have enough resource. So if you don't, if you if you're tired of having resource, you can pre-order and dash it to me. Or a handbag, of course, you know, ladies, you can even give us one full room to put all our handbags. It still wouldn't be enough handbags. So uh, please patronize Gloria and take um, recognizance of this opportunity and reach out to Gloria. All right, I see Victor's hand raised up. So Victor, please go ahead. Victor Njoko, unmute yourself and go ahead, please. Hello, Victor. Hello, Victor. Okay. Looks like Victor is maybe having a network issue or something. Any other person, you can drop a chat in the chat box or indicate by raising your hand. Gloria, are you still raising your hand or it was the first one? It was the first one, then we drop it. Oh, okay. Okay, I don't see Victor's hand raised anymore and it looks like he is not a uh, network. I thought as much network is his issue. He's no longer on the call. Any other person want to showcase their business, their products, what they're into? Okay, so we'll move on to the next agenda for the day. Um, but before we do that also, let's have, um, I see, let me check the chat box. I see, okay, these are all kudos, kudos and positive feedbacks from our audience to you, Madam Abigail. Well done. Um, this is from Kristen Gabriel. He says, hi all, I'm Dr. Kristen Gabriel, um, Bay, a lecturer, singer and author. 
I have a book titled A Contemporary Singer's Companion. It's available at Condios Bookshop, Birabi Street, GRA Portacourt by Military Church. Please spread the word. Okay, so um, Christine has um, a book he wrote called A Contemporary Singer Companion. So it's available in um, Condios Bookshop. So please reach out to Kristen. Kristen, do you want to drop your phone number or a social media handle that they can reach you from? Because of course this meeting ends, this chat is going to clear up. So I think putting down your contacts will be very, very useful. So I see Gloria has a uh, contact there and her phone, her phone number and her Instagram page. So please let's take, let's write it down, take note of it so we can reach out to her for our pre-orders. So I don't see any, okay, Christian has dropped his, um, his or her contact. So please let's reach out to Christian on that phone number to place an order for that book that he wrote or she wrote from Dr. Christian. Okay, all right, so we'll move on to the next agenda for today, which is the, I hope I'm not skipping anybody that wants to showcase their business. So nobody beats me after now. Okay, this is from Obina. Obina says, hi all, I'm Obina Anointing, an entrepreneur, student and caterer. My business name is Biono Comedas. Um, Obina, it would be nice to drop your phone number and also what you do is your business um, into, is your business about catering or what exactly to be nice to do that. And like I said, you actually, you actually have the opportunity to unmute yourself and showcase your business. If you don't want to type in the chat box because it's not everybody that is reading that chat box. All right, so while we might be expecting some more, the next on our agenda is the introduction of the second speaker. So, um, um, Simeon, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Please go ahead and take three raffle draws. Thank you. So we're taking our raffle draw, just in case you didn't know you're just joining or you missed out. Um, we have a raffle draw game. We shuffle, your number comes up. They call, you have to unmute yourself and um, um, let us know that you are on the call. Like you have to be active to be a winner. So please let's listen out for our names. Simeon, go ahead, please. Okay, please confirm if you can see my screen. It's loading from my end. Is it yes, on? I yes, I can see it. Okay. Okay, we shuffle. So our first number is 89. Uh, Ruya Matthias, remember the person is not on the call the first time. So I'll shuffle again. One four eight. One four eight. Uh, we don't have up to one four eight here. One three seven. I don't think we have up to one three seven either. Thirty five. Thirty five, Emmanuel. Thirty 
Agboru, Ibanueli Agboru. Do you have any person like this on the call? Please let's answer if we're being called. Do you have any person like this on the call? Agboru. Okay, share for again. One o five. I remember the time we display one o five earlier on. <laughs> one o five. Ari. Bogias. Ari. Ari. Do we have Ari on the call? Do we have Ari on the call? Okay. We have to shuffle again. One four eight. We don't have up to one four eight. Thirty seven. Thirty seven. Thirty seven is in it. Abimbola, do you have any Abimbola on the call? Our speaker for yesterday. I didn't oh. see her join today. Okay. We have eight one, eight one. Chukwemeka David. Chukwemeka David. Are you on the call? Chukwe Mika David. Wow. I have to show for again. Okay, in that case, let's do our lucky um, chat members, active members. Okay. Now remember my screen or my system is different from every other person's system. So I am reading or I am taking from my own system, my own laptop. So if you feel you are the first person on the chat or the last person or the second person, but I didn't call you, please bear with me because my I joined in late or network could have happened and I rejoined. So it is what my... Um, uh, my laptop is showing me that I will be working with. All right, so from those that are actively involved with messages and um, notes and questions and all that and all that, let me see, I'm seeing so many messages but I don't want the one that has to do with dropping your number and all that. I want from the speaker point. Okay, so our lucky winner for today from when Madam Abigail started speaking to us or spoke to us is, do we have Sandra on the call? Is Sandra Owu, Owu Appa? Sandra Owu Appa. If you're here, please unmute yourself and let us know you are here. Hi, Sandra is on the call. Sandra, are you here? Yes, I am. Going? Yes, I am. Sandra is on the call. Oh, she is? Oh, yes. I don't know if I'm hearing her or not. Okay, so Sandra is a lucky winner. So Sandra, please drop your phone number on the chat box so we can be able to reach out to you with your prize. All right, and then the next person, the next active person right after Sandra was Christine Gabriel. 
Christine Gabriel, are you on the call? Please unmute yourself and answer. Christine Gabriel. Okay, looks like Christine is not on the call. Um, after Christine, um, another person is Keto, Keto Chuku, Kaito Chuku Chukudi. Is Chukudi on the call? Okay, looks like Chukuti is, Chukudi is not on the call. So we'll move to the next person. The next person is Tari Odubo. Tari Odubo. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, Tari Odubo, congratulations. You are uh, one of our raffle draw winners for today. All right, um, Simeon, please go ahead again. Let's try the raffle draw again. Okay. We have sixteen. Ibrahim Bila. Ibrahim Bila. Are you on the call? Ibrahim Ella. Are you on the call? Okay. Bilal. Bilal. Yeah. Bilal. Sorry. Good morning, Ibrahim. everyone. I'm on the call. I'm on the call. Good morning. Uh, oh, congratulations, Ibrahim. Congratulations. Congratulations. You are a lucky winner today. So we'll move on to the next agenda. There, we have three winners already. So we'll move on to the next agenda. Don't worry. There's still four more opportunities. Don't give up. Don't lose faith. You could be the next winner. Just stay with us and stay faithful. All right, so we'll move on to the next agenda for today, which is the introduction of the second speaker that's going to talk to us. Let me share my screen like right away. All right, our second... Okay, why am I sharing the different screen and another different screen is showing? Mm. Ah, Royal is joining. It looks like somebody has told Royal that, see, yeah, we now come and join. <laughs> Okay, I finally do have the right screen now. I, no, I still don't. Uh, my system is giving me serious drama today. Share again. This is what I want to share. Please now. Please, what are we seeing on my screen? What is this? Huh? Katrine. Oh, okay. Phone. Finally. <sighs> okay. All right. Let me just go straight to introducing our second speaker for today. So our second speaker for today is Catherine Mwachuku. She's a young professional and she's also um, SPE Section 103 Wycons. Um, there's something we celebrate in SPE Section 103 monthly. We celebrate awesome women that are making impact and um, creating or making a difference or um, just doing something amazingly in their space, either in their space of academics or their space of in the in, um, oil and gas or energy industry, and also in SPE itself. These are ladies that are serving and giving in their time, volunteering for different activities, and also still excelling in their academics or in their 
industry or workplace where they are. And Catherine was one of the ladies that was celebrated. And she is one of our icons for SPE section 103. So Catherine Nwachuku is a graduate of petroleum engineering from the Federal University of Owerri and earned a master's in petroleum engineering and project management from the Institute of Petroleum Studies, IPS, with distinction and just concluded our MBA program from the University of South Wales. So this is a bag of knowledge that is going to talk to us. I mean, you can see all the achievements she has gotten so far and not just achievements, but distinguished mm -hmm. achievements. All right, so Catherine, she has several industry experiences as, the, as a business um, development officer at Chess Rock Nigeria Limited a well-performance intern at Total ENP and process engineer trainee at Saipem. What else do you want, people? <laughs> so she joined SPE in 2012 and has served at several levels. I mean, when Catherine was nominated to be a YCON, the vote, I mean, she and Madam Ella had the highest vote so far of all our YPs that were being celebrated. So that means she is doing or she did something significant that would make a lot of persons to vote for her or want her to be nominated as a YCON. She, um, okay, so back to her citation. Um, she joined SP in 2012 and has served at, at various levels, international level as a student and section award judge, national level as NAIS YP workshop committee member and Port Harcourt section level as a student affairs co-chair. Um, a YP workshop co-chair, a speaker at several ambassadorial lecture program. And she has also volunteered for several committee or groups in SPE, charity events and mentoring program. She's an active YP, a hobbies are singing, volunteering and camping. So at this time, please let's welcome Catherine as she takes the podium and unleashes her bags of knowledge upon us. Thank you, Catherine. Please go ahead, ma'am. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Hello? Hello, I'm, my, I'm actually, I just have to put on my mind. What is that all about? Anyone? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead, ma'am. Okay. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, sorry, I won't be on in my video because I am on transit at the moment. And, uh, I didn't know how to like, you know, say it, but then it's just what it is. I would just have to put it as um, one of my glass ceilings, one of my barriers to actually make <laughs> from the presentation today. So um, I really want to appreciate SVE section 103 and um, everyone for giving me this platform to actually share my experience and also to give a talk. So um, all protocols duly observed um, from the list of um, participants, I could see so many distinguished ladies and gentlemen. And then um, I also want to Acknowledge Mr. Adebola Bada and then to everyone else. And thank you, Dokas, for reaching out to me on this. Can everyone hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, so I can go on. From what I got, empowering yourself as a woman. I mean, when I looked at that, I was like, wow, 
how do I go about this um, this talk? And then um, I'll just first of all give an agenda of it. It's going to be freestyle, so I'm not going to be sharing my screen due to my current location right now, being on transit and everything. So the rundown will be what the concept of empowerment, the role as women in it, the barriers, and then possible solutions. But all these will be coming from an angle of a young professional. According to SPE, from what I have known and what has been explained, a young professional is someone who is below the age of 35 years. If you're not in that category or someone who has less than 10 years of experience. But then we have um, our awesome senior members who are youth at heart. So they are all included at the higher level. So that's just to distinguish that. So empowerment, empowerment. The word empowerment is kind of like broad. So where do we look at it? Empowerment is about giving more power. Is technique actually to release your full potential as an individual in form of skills, form of work given to you, or you be held responsible and accountable for your actions. So all these techniques contribute to your competence, and also to your satisfaction as a human being. And both moment is the process. So it starts from yesterday through today. You can in. You need to start from somewhere. Where was I yesterday? Where am I today? And where am I looking to go to towards in future? So as a young professional, there are so many barriers. One, the environment. It could be barriers could be internal or external. So we're looking at the internal barrier, it could be lack of vision as a young professional. You are heading, you need to find yourself. Like um, Madam Abigail says, fear. fear. Fear could be in any form. Or oh, will my voice be heard? What if I feel? Would they accept me? Are there opportunities, you know, all those kind of things. That's the fear. All those things are coming from within you. So that makes it an internal barrier. Then for the external one, it could be workload. You know, you have so much on your plate that you can't just, you know, achieve much. And you need an encouragement. You need a motivation. Or possibly you need access to something. So workload comes in there. Then external values and um, external barriers could be um, societal views. What the society view you as a woman or what your family views you as or, or what your company sees you as. So if they're seeing you from a negative perspective, 
that's a barrier, if they are seeing you from a positive perspective, that's an opportunity for you. Okay. Then an external um, barrier is um, professionalism, perfect, perfectionism. Sorry, perfectionism. You want to get it right. Yes, you have to get it right the first time. But then, like Madam Abigail said, start from somewhere. Show might not look. How can you start from somewhere which to achieve or what you want to achieve? You could start from there. So, another external barrier is a um, lack of opportunities. I mean, when you have so much potentials, but there are no opportunities within you, then that could be a barrier. The next one I would want to point out is um, poor networking or poor relationship with people. Okay, so those are the external barriers. So coming as a young professional, um, one of the mantras I've always used is to act local, but think global. At local, but think global. When you think global, look at the global perspective, the global standards, and then you act it in your locality, bringing it down home, bringing it down to SPE section one or three, your school, to your offices, and um. With that, I would want to lay out some solutions. First is finding yourself and finding that strong conviction. In finding yourself, you need to find your purpose. I, I really like the way um, Madame Abigail laid it out. I mean, I learned so much from what she said. You need to find your purpose, you know, your vision. You need to find that talent, even though it's not so clear, but at least you should have a clear sense of what it is. You should find your strength. You should also discover your weakness. Where are your areas of weaknesses? What are the opportunities laid out? And then what is threatening you in that environment? In all this, I've, I've come to understand that one could have a vision board. I, I, I learned that I learned that this year actually, you know. So just flying over the internet, vision board, vision board. I was like, what's vision board? So it could is it's more like laying out what you want to do, your purposes and you know, finding who can help you. at what time to do that's what empowerment. empowerment is not competition it's not comparison it's about competence today's population i have to go on the world bank to get the statistics as of 2019 the population of women is about 49.6%, which is more like equal. So for every one man in the world, there is another woman. But, sorry, but where, how are women represented in today's environment coming to the um, energy sector coming to the engineering, coming to our offices, how are women represented? Now, that's a question we need to ask ourselves. We are not comparing ourselves to the, our male counterparts, no. But 
what we need to be doing is to contribute, to make our voices heard, to bring to the table, you know, some something of value. So that this world will be a better place for all. So empowerment is not um, competition, is not comparison, or is about competence and contribution. So to to be an empowered woman, there um there are stones, according, according sharp stones. Call them sharp stones that you really need to do, or you really need to have. I know that there, um, on the platform, it's not only the women that are here, there are men, and I really appreciate them. Seeing them on the platform like this, you know, gives us this encouragement that we have people, you know, who will, who are, you know, actually watching out for us and they would like to know how they can help you know to empower us so one of um the sharp stones i would love to mention is your vision finding yourself when you find yourself you need to have the right attitude right attitude right attitude in the sense that you can do it that can do attitude you can do it there are times when programs comes up on um, for the section and they're like they're looking for someone to do that i mean there are people that could do it or you could volunteer okay i can try and do this what do i need to do you see people who come out and you know, give you suggestions on how to go about it. And you do it. Then another thing is uh, one of your stones is your strategy. Strategy, what, how do you want to achieve that? Then the next one is visibility. For you to be empowered, you need to be visible. I mean, nobody wants to give power to someone that is already hidden. No, you need to be visible. For you to participate on the table, you have to come to the table. You might not speak, but be visible. I um I would like to share a story. When I when I joined SP in 2012, I joined as a student. And then we normally have technical meetings at Tokyo Grand Hotel. If I can remember every Thursdays or so, 5 p.m. And that means I'll have to leave school after lectures, join other members, and travel down to Port Harcourt. Sometimes we get to go back that same night, but then due to security reasons, you know, as the year goes by, the sessions, you know, are to support, you know, and then lodge students. But then, before then, you find yourself coming back very late in the night, sometimes 11 p.m. And those things put people, a whole lot of people off. And they're like, no, 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 I cannot be traveling, all those things. Yes, there are risks, but then you should be able to take those risks. You should be visible. So, me participating so early then, I got to understand, okay, there are opportunities, there are scholarships that you need to apply for, there are um, student conferences you need to attend that have limited slots. Um, you know, you need to be visible, you need to be visible for students, you need to be visible to your leaders, the student leaders, so that they can know that, okay, you can represent the school well. And then without um, asking questions, your name is already penned down, waiting for your approval. You know, it's, it's, it's no magic, you just have to be visible. Visibility is key. 
Then another sharp stone I would want to say is participation and involvement. Participation and involvement. Get involved. Get involved. You need to get involved. So sorry about the announcement. Still on transit. You need to get involved in things as little as it might seem. Get involved. Participate. Let your voice be heard. Let your voice be heard. You know? And then another thing is capabilities through learning. In today's world, um, what distinguishes one from another is your ability to learn. To learn, relearn, and unlearn. One needs to learn. Learning is an ongoing process. So you need to learn what are the things that the industry needs now. Where is it going to? What are the competencies that they are looking for? What are the skill sets that is setting for the future? I mean, if if the industry is getting to 5.0 and then you are in 3.0, I mean, you're lagging behind. You can't, you, you can't, you won't even be on the table because the table has already moved. So that aspect, capability to learning. And on a final note is to strike a balance learn when to say no okay so um either on field or in the office roll up your sleeves if it's to be in the field roll up your sleeves and get to work get to work as a woman get to work as a man i mean someone should see you as an engineer first before seeing you as a female if you are coming from a woman's perspective. Because why? Because you are there to do your job, not because of your sexuality or anything. And again, women, students, female students particularly, you need to see yourself not as a means to get a job done, but to be part of the job done need to be part of it as a participation aspect. And again, um, support other women. Support other women. When you see a woman that is rising, support that person. I mean, support is key. People tend to say that women, uh, they don't get to support each other, but I mean, we need to support ourselves. When, when, I, when I started... Um, as a young person, like I graduated and then I needed to make the switch as a graduate member. And I'm like, what do I do? What do I do? I had to speak to some people and luckily for me, Madam Ella, you know, she was there to support. Madam Patience, you know, these, these are the people I know that when, when you see them, they are there, they are willing to support you. They will be, oh, Catherine can do this. Yeah, she can. Even you doubting yourself with the, the support they've really given to you, you can say, oh, you cannot just fall, or you cannot just fail in that aspect. So women, we need to support ourselves. Where you see your classmates or your classmates coming up for something as a woman, you really, really need to support. I can't just say that I achieved all those things all by myself. No. There were people that I shadowed. There were people that mentored me. There are people that I learned from. And there are people that supported me. And again, move out from your space. Collaborate. Collaboration is another aspect. Is another solution. Collaboration. Apologies for us again. I'm still on transit. So another thing is on collaboration. Learn to collaborate with people. You know, collaboration, learn from them. What is it that they are doing that you need to import into your skill set, into your space? 
So, um, that was it. I don't have much to say, but I, I feel that when more women are empowered, nations are built and then there are less stress on things that they have to do and then there is more productivity. So with that, I would want to, you know, just close for, for today, empowering yourself, encourage people around you, look out for opportunities, look out for opportunities on, 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 on within this section, there's a lot of, <clears throat> there are lots of opportunities that one needs to harness. On the international scale, what are the opportunities? Go to the website, get involved. What are your technical disciplines? Which area are you looking at? Is it asset management? Is it production, reservoir? Whatever aspect it is, or if you're not even an engineer or, you know, and all that, look at ways, look at people who have made it in those space, you know, and then shadow them, look at them, what are they doing? You have a better view of that. And then if you're opportunity to meet them, meet them, get mentoring from them. And I think with that, they can position you to actually shoot at the right spot. So, um, Thanks everyone for the opportunity. And I'll have to give this stage back to Dorcas. Dorcas, please. Thank you so much, Madam Catherine. That was that was a wonderful um, lecture on how to smash those glass ceilings and empower ourselves. Um, she made us understand that women should support women. Um, we should take actions when it's necessary. We should be willing to volunteer when the opportunity comes and also um, learn to recognize those that help us in our achievements to achieve where we are or do what we are or what we have become because no man is an island to themselves or his or uh, herself. So thank you so much, Madam Catherine. We sincerely do appreciate your time. And we, sorry for the stress that you had to still deliver this lecture while on transit, but we sincerely appreciate your doggedness and your hardship and saying, no, this must, the game must go. The, the ball must keep rolling. So thank you so much. We sincerely do appreciate. So at this time, um, before we take our membership drive, I hope Purity is still on the call. Okay, yeah, she is. So Purity, you're going to be doing the membership drive in the next one minute. You have five minutes to do that. But before we do that, Madam Catherine has two questions for us. And whoever answers these questions, get to be one of our winners for our raffle draw. So let me go to the question. So I ask it correctly and exactly how she wants it. It says, first question, who was the last female section chair and when? If you know the answer, drop it on the chat box or indicate by raising your hand and we'll allow you to answer. Who was the last female section chair, SP section 103, who was the last female section chair and when? Okay, while we're waiting for that question to be answered, I guess people are probably typing it right now on Google and all the different um, SP sites to know. Uh, so I will wait for the answers to that question. Let me just go ahead and drop the second one also. It says, what is the dedicated SPE website for young professionals? I know we have mostly students here, but I also see young professionals here. Kimberly is here, Purity is here and so on and so forth. So um, what is the dedicated SPE website 
for young professionals. Okay, so while we wait for those answers, remember first come, first serve. The first answer I see in the chat box, the person is going to be the winner. So while we wait for that, Purity, please go ahead and give us your membership drive. Thank you. Good day, everyone. Thank you, my doctors and everyone for having me today. I'm Purity Izukaba. Well, all protocols duly observed. Hope you can hear me. Yes, we can. Hello. Hello. Yes, yeah, go, go ahead. Okay. So, like I said earlier, I'm Zukaba, a geophysicist by profession, and then a young professional member of SPE. So, um, can I share my screen? Yes, you can. Okay, I'm here to deliver um SPE membership talk. Let me share the screen. Please, just a minute. Okay. So, like I said earlier, I'm here to deliver SPE membership talk. Basically, SPE is a place for all of today's industry professionals, regardless of experience or course of study. Um, there are many reasons to be a part of SPE community. Um, the slide says, who can be a member? We have student members, we have graduates, we have young professionals and professionals. Like I said earlier, there are several benefits when you are an SP member. SP provides unparalleled insights, shared expertise, lifelong learning and community strength to fuel the success of its members. SP have excellent conference and workshop um, for, for its members, like the live technical events, the NAIS, there are too numerous to mention, so as a member, there's an opportunity for you to attend SPE events to stay abreast of current technologies. So here are four easy ways for you to become an SPE member. You can reach out to the link um, below. I think we'll drop the link after the presentation. You fill the form. These are for new members. You fill the form. Then for new members, you can also pay your SP registration dues in the accounts provided on the slide. Then follow the process, fill the SP membership form, scan and send the scan, um, the scanned copy of the field form to spehc at gmail.com. And then follow the other processes, you know, so that um, when you send these details to SP, Court session, they inform SPI of your membership details and then activate your membership. Okay. And then for our existing members, I would like to ask if you have renewed your SP membership because it's necessary. So if you have, thumbs up to you. And then if you have not renewed your SPE membership, it's necessary. It's not um, compulsory, but it's mandatory you do that because the membership opens up new SP opportunities for you. It keeps your SP profile up to date and tell SPE when you know, um, your, your, your membership status, all right? So we have several benefits of um, being either an existing member or a new member of SPE. 
time will film it to enumerate all of all of them we it keeps you gives you access to the jpt one petrol and other resources you stay up to date with industry events you continue enjoying discounted free workshops. if you look at the previous slide i shared with you the new um members the the fee for the new members is higher than that of the existing members so when you keep on renewing your membership you also have access to discounted um member um, membership renewal fee you also have discounted fees on workshops and um, conferences okay as well as your sk membership years keeps counting now how do you renew your membership just um almost the same process like that of um when you are signing up newly just pay your sp membership dues to the account name and number provided society of petroleum engineers i think that will also be dropped down or i can share the slide later on then you send your name your spe number for existing members and a proof of payment to spportacode at gmail.com for renewal okay then you can as well enjoy the prizes benefits of being an spe member so how to renew your membership basically um for students spe membership renewal is free because um chevron have already sponsored that and then you can also follow these um processes on the on the screen i may not outline all of them because of time you just follow these processes i think it's self-explanatory you can do that yourself and Hello, Purity, are you still on the call? Yes, yeah, sorry for the interruption. So um, I'll continue. So that's basically um, how you can renew your membership. This is the final step, okay, where you see this icon, the Chevron icon below. You just click on pay now, and then that's all, all right? That's for student um, renewal process. And then for the, the recent graduates, you no know, SPE. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. So to be a member is not asking. Okay, so for recent graduates, SPE is aware that probably you may not, not have gotten a job or have something doing at the moment. So SPE provides you with a fee waiver upon graduation, okay? So you can apply for a fee waiver and have your membership renewed for free. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, please. Go ahead. Okay. So that's for that. Then the eligibility is for you to have a compulsory post-graduation military or social service, just like our NYSC, you um, upload a proof of that, okay? And then the, the, dues are done, the dues waivers are applied for annually, not for two um, consecutive years. It can, be, it, can be, it can be given to you for two consecutive years, but you need to apply annually, all right? So you send a mail to service at sp.org, send your details, send your name, your SP number, and the reason why you need the waiver, all right? And then that will be done in less than 10 minutes. That's how quick the response is. Now we are aware of um, the pandemic and the coronavirus effects on almost every sector of life. So if your expected date of graduation is always as affected by the pandemic, you can also sign into um, your SPE account by visiting spe.org and visit your profile, edit education column to the new year expected or to the new or your expected year of graduation. Okay, probably you ought to have graduated this year for final year students. And then due to the pandemic, your, your um, graduation has been extended to next year. So you just follow this process. 
extend your graduation date. I, I think it's also self-explanatory when you start the process. Just extend your um, graduation date and then save the process when you're done. All right. Okay. Um, that's for that. That's the first tip. And then for the second tip, you sign into your SPE account by visiting spe.org. All right. Click on renew membership. Click on renew membership and then kindly select edit and update year of graduate. That's just basically what I've um, um, explained. But the only difference is that you do not continue to renewal as a professional member. All you need to do is just to update the year, to change the year, okay? You don't go to um, update it as a professional member. When you do that, you cut short of your free membership benefit that you ought to get in subsequent years. So you just extend the year you ought to graduate, all right? So you kindly um, confirm your extension and click on students renewal. Remember, not as a professional member, and that's all. The student sponsorship will still continue. So thank you, um, everyone, and that's all for the membership talk. Thank you so much, Purity. So we'll be looking forward to those of us that are not SP members joining SPE and those of us that are SP members maintaining and retaining their membership by paying their membership due or utilizing their opportunity as a young professional to um, two years free membership um, opportunity. Thank you so much, Purity. We sincerely do appreciate. We're going to take the news back to our different chapters and our section for those people that do not know about it to be able to know. Please, can you stop sharing your screen so I can share mine? All right, so next on our agenda is the game trivia. The, the game, the question is there on the chat box. Um, who was the last female section chair of SP section 103 and when was her tenure? Second question is, is there a dedicated website for young professionals of SP section 103 or SP as a whole international? If there is, please write down the website. If there isn't, also let us know that there isn't. So while we're waiting for answers to that question. Um, Simeon, will you be able to still do the raffle draw? No. Okay. Um, so in that case, we, we still have two slots for raffle draws. So um, we have we have six winners so far. We have two questions there for the next two winners, which is eight. Remember, we're doing 10 lucky winners. So we still have space for two more winners. On that note, uh, let's go back to our chat box and see our active people. Mm. Let's see who was active during Madam Catherine's lecture. Who was active? Who was active? Okay, I, I'm not really seeing, it's mostly people trying to answer the questions and the other persons that were active were, are all winners, except for, let me see, uh, Daniel is already a winner today and was yesterday. Uh, let's see who else. Okay, I see Tonya Tofan. Tonya Tofan, are you still on the call? If you are, please unmute yourself 
and let us know you are here. Tonya Tufan, okay? Tonya is not on the call. Okay, let me check again. David is already a winner. <sighs> okay, that does not still help me either. <laughs> All right, so let's just move to the next agenda of the day, which is the closing remark or the vote of thanks by, and that is supposed to be taken by Tonya Tufan. Where is Tonya Tufan They're supposed to take closing remark for us? Uh, Pauline, that's not, we don't want a link. Let us know the name of the site, the website. This is just a link taking you to young professionals. So that is if there is, yes, if not. Mm, let me see who is on our. Okay, Madam Ella is here. Madam Ella, please, can you take the closing remark and vote of thanks for us, please? Hello, Ella Mozan, please could you take the vote of thanks for us? Okay. I can't get hold of her. All right. I guess I have to take the vote of thanks <laughs> that I did not plan for. So once again, thank you everybody for joining. Just in case you join late or you don't know, my name is Dokas Jimmy. I am the moderator for this event today for day one. Actually, I was also for, I mean, I was for day one and also for today, day two. Um, thank you so much for joining us. We sincerely do appreciate your time, your data, your contributions, your feedbacks, your encouragement to our speakers. Um, you don't know how much those comments does mean to the speaker. I say so because I've, I, I, I speak at events and, and sometimes what keeps you going or what makes you not to faint while speaking is that encouragement, is that thumbs up that your participants give. So thank you so much, our participants. If you were not here to be part of this event, this event would not hold. Thank you, SP Section 103, for the opportunity for us to empower our women, our students, females, and even males also that joined. Thank you, um, the win. Women in Energy for hosting this event for different schools. Um, this is the second program and four schools so far. We sincerely do appreciate and we're looking forward to hosting one for all our student chapter under SP section 103. Um, thank you for giving us the go ahead and for helping with the planning and um, approval of, of everything that needed to be in this program. Um, a special thank you go to Niger Delta University for all of your support, for putting in effort to plan this event. It's funny enough, most of them are writing exams right now, if not all of them, and yet they had to put in their time, their, their data, their knowledge into this to make it a reality. They didn't let the exam be a barrier to them. That shows how much love they have for SPE. Thank you also Namde Azikiwe University for being willing to host this um, event, even though you are actually, actually writing your exams during this time. We sincerely do appreciate. Thank you for all of our participants that showcased their business. And I'm encouraging every single one of us here to reach out to them and patronize them in their different business 
um, aspects or entrepreneurial area they're into. Uh, thank you so much to our speakers, our awesome speakers we had yesterday, Madam Amy Abimbola and um, Ajara Kabia, and also today for Madam Abigail, we sincerely appreciate your time, your volunteerism, awesome, um, in, uh, awesome information and impact you passed on to us. We sincerely do appreciate. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you so much for being willing to speak to us. I know the busy schedule you run and yet you were willing to take this offer and to speak to us. Thank you for your time and your data, your devotion, your spirit of volunteerism. It wasn't just in why you were in Port Harcourt. You weren't just doing it to be seen. It is part of it, it's what lives in you. Thank you so much. Um, thank you again, our participants, every single person, even those ones that did not say anything, they were just on the sidelines and counting the moments and taking down notes. We sincerely do appreciate and we recognize you. We're happy you joined us. We're happy you're part of us. Thank you so much. Um, thank you to the president of NDU and NAU for your coordination of the executive and your support during the planning of this program. Thank you so much. Um, special thank you to the guy that made our flyer. Um, for me, the flyer was amazing. Um, uh, I, I can't remember his name right now, but there are two of them. Um, Jesse and the other guy, thank you so much. We sincerely do appreciate. And thank you to our sponsors for the raffle draw. Um, our sponsors for this raffle draw is our um, uh, keynote speaker for last Women Development Program. She still sponsored this current um, raffle draw um, program for this particular program. Thank you so much, Madam Bella Obodu for your support and your sponsorship always to SP Section 103. We sincerely do appreciate. And to all our winners, congratulations to you. We're very, very happy for you. Even though me, I don't even get the opportunity to win, and yet I'm just dashing people prizes up and down. Hmm, there's God. Though. Next time I'll not be a moderator, so I can win too, uh, or a speaker. <laughs> Thank you, Simeon. Thank you, our secretariat, for always being supportive and being there for your sacrifice and your time, and you're always stepping in, especially Simeon. Simeon, I sincerely do appreciate your hard work and your effort. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, thank you also our membership team for coming up today and being able to um, give us a talk on membership drive and encouraging us on how to renew our membership and how to become a member of SPE. We sincerely do appreciate also. And then above all, or let me not just stop there. Let me also thank myself for the time and the devotion in putting into this and making sure it's a reality. Um, it was it was worth the while, it was awesome. I, I learn new things every day. I am planning these programs. And thank you, SP, for the opportunity. I sincerely do appreciate. And I look forward to serving more in more capacity in SPE. All right, so um, on that note, I be to say thank you so much, and I would like a volunteer to give us a closing prayer. For that question, you can reach me. Um, I'm going to drop my WhatsApp number right now on the chat box, so anybody that has the answer to that question, you can still reach me and get your prize. Um, I'm not seeing any answer so far. I'm just seeing comments of great events. And please go on our different social media spaces and like this event, um, comment on it, especially on LinkedIn. Um, drop a feedback, even if just two or three words, so people know that it is actually quite impactful. Don't just put the comments here only in the chat box. Please put it on the different social media spaces and tag us so that we can also come and comment also and like it. Thank you for being part of this event. We sincerely do appreciate. Uh, we have another student uh, women development program. Um, we're planning that one to be physical. That will be at River State University. Um, so if you have your time and you, you're able to, please plan to join and be part of it. It's, we're, we're looking at a physical event, seeing um, RSU is in section, um, but please, with all protocol of COVID-19 duly observed, 
So if you're planning to come, please ensure you are COVID-19 compliant. Um, the rules and regulation that are put in place to cope and to reduce the spread of or even stop the spread of COVID-19 um, virus. Thank you so much. So on that note, um, let me drop my WhatsApp number. And while I'm dropping that, I would like a volunteer to please take the closing prayer for us. You can indicate by using the raising hand emoji. Oh yeah, and also just in case I forget, for a recap of this event, you can visit our YouTube channel, um, SP Portacot, search for this event and get to be part of it or get a recap of what you must have missed yesterday as in day one and today's event. Ah, nobody wants to pray. Okay, I see David Echendu's hand raised to pray. And guess what, David Echendu, you won yourself a raffle draw. I didn't want to announce that because I know everybody will raise their hand to pray. I wanted a volunteer. So you are a winner again. SPE Section 103 owes you three winning prizes. Ha, Daniel, David, you can prepare to this event, so I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah. I told you, so give me the secret of everything you robbed for Bordeaux, you know, Greece. Uh, <laughs> nothing anyway. It's just, um, like I said, it's the reward for, for service. Uh, when you <laughs> yes, yeah. very true. Please go ahead and pray for us. Okay, um, Father, we thank you. We bless your name for such an impactful um, conference that we've had together. Father, Lord, everything we've... Um, just done everything we've listened to the inspirations all the injection pills that we've received but i let it be that um they will stay and um they will be useful in our career in our professional lives in jesus name and um, as we also plan to meet physically oh lord i pray that everybody will be safe and sound in jesus name for Amen. everyone that have spent their time spent their money, resources, and um, our guest speakers, our keynote speakers, Lord, you bless them beyond um, comprehension in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, David. I sincerely do appreciate your willingness to serve. Um, so we still have one more raffle draw winner. And since we cannot run our raffle draw, um, our e-raffle draw, and we cannot really pick from 